Hello and welcome to the PFF Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Yankee. We just had 16 games of preseason over the past couple of days. I know a lot of teams rested their starters, but a lot of teams did play their starters. So I'm going to go through my top couple of takeaways of what I saw in the preseason this past week and what matters for fantasy football this season. We will start with the Las Vegas Raiders, where we saw a massive rotation at running back. Zamir White, over the first two drives, played seven snaps, Alexander Madison three. Madison was playing the clear passing situations. This is exactly what they did in the first preseason game. Um, Then the next drive happened. At this point, Jacoby Myers was taken out of the game. Michael Mayer was taken out of the game. Uh, That's why the snap count graph stops at that point, because that's when the first starters were taken out. But we saw Madison take basically that entire third drive. Amir Abdullah took one snap. Um, Then we saw Zamir White come back into the game, which was a little surprising. We saw a similar thing last week where White came back for just two plays. It was near the goal line, so I thought they just wanted to get him some experience in the red zone. Um, So I didn't think too much of it last week. But this week, we saw White come back for the fourth drive, the fifth drive, the sixth drive. Uh, He was splitting time with uh, Labe during those snaps. Um, Labe typically taking the passing situations, but also took a couple early down snaps in there as well. Uh, then we got to the seventh drive. It was a two-minute drill for the Raiders. Alabe uh, took that entire drive. Then we get to the second half of the game, and White is back on the field. At this point, um, three-fifths of the offensive line were uh, long gone from the game. Like I said, we saw Mares and Meyer taken out by then. Uh, Trey Tucker also did not return for the second half, so the vast majority of of Raiders starters were gone by this point. But White was back on the field, took the first couple of snaps of the eighth drive. We saw Madison come back for that drive. We saw Labe come back for that drive. So over the first eight drives, we saw Samir White take 18 snaps, Madison take 16, Labe take 13, and Abdullah take two. So this is pretty concerning because we almost never see starting running backs in the second half of preseason in any week. Looked back at the last couple of years, uh, specifically that second week of the preseason, and only one running back had finished in the top 50 who played in the second half of a preseason game as a veteran. Obviously, rookies, um, it's expected for them to play in the second half a lot and work their way up the depth chart. But among the veterans, uh, the only example of a top 50 running back was Devontae Freeman in 2021. He was with the Saints at the time, didn't make the roster, ended up with the Ravens after they cut out or had injuries to all their running backs. So that was the only example of a top 50 running back. Um, this is pretty concerning just in the fact that White did not play on third downs again, so it's pretty clear he's not going to have that role this season. He did not play in the two-minute drill, which is also concerning. It gets pretty difficult for a running back to be a consistent fantasy starter without taking two-minute drills or third down snaps. Um, you have to be playing in a pretty good offense, Not sure we'll see that out of the Raiders this year. Obviously, there's a chance they can put it together, given they have a new quarterback, new offensive coordinator, and everything. So a chance that this ends up being a better-than-expected season, but that alone makes it hard. But we could see Madison take some of White snaps. We could see Labe take some of White snaps. It seems pretty clear that they are comfortable getting all of the running backs involved. Uh, Just seeing Labe take more snaps this week um, with the – starters or top backups in the second quarter rather than having to wait for the second half so this looks like it's going to be a committee backfield which we should expect out of uh, luke getsy's offense he's the new offensive coordinator with chicago we saw this with david montgomery khalil herbert uh, going back to his days with the packers uh, aaron jones jamal williams so i moved white down my rankings I have him lower than the two Titans running backs, the two Bengals running backs, since at least they have a lot of upside if things go right, where White's someone that I don't foresee being in fantasy starting lineups the majority of weeks. The other backfield that I want to touch on, we will go to the New York Giants. I have my Eli Manning jersey on because the Giants were so generous to us this preseason. Um, They played their starters for the entire first half of the game. That was everyone on offense from the quarterback to the offensive line, not dealing with too many injuries. So it was literally what we should expect to see this season. And Devin Singletary is the one player I want to focus on, played 29 of 33 snaps with the starters. So a clear high majority of snaps. Um, Eric Gray did take four snaps, typically in passing situations, but it wasn't any kind of consistent 
situations where Gray was in. It wasn't like he was taking all of the third and long or anything like that. It was just when Singletary needed a couple plays off. So it was great to see Singletary see that high percentage of snaps. We've seen it done it over small stretches of time, both in Buffalo and in Houston. So um, I think Singletary does have a decent chance of being a fantasy starter more weeks than not if he's having this usage. It's worth noting Tyrone Tracy, uh, did suffer that injury last week, um, is expected to miss some time. There's a chance that this could look a little different once Tracy's back and healthy. Tracy could take a few more snaps than Gray was taking, but Singletary is in a situation where he should be among the around top five running backs in offensive snaps this season if he stays healthy. And we've seen that before and then him only be a borderline fantasy starter. But I think this is a case where volume is what matters the most in fantasy football and Singletary is going to see that volume this season. So I think Singletary, he's someone with an ADP around running back 34. Uh, he's not going to be this huge high upside fantasy starter, but he is someone that I think you can get as a fantasy starter uh, later than the draft than you would typically have to take a running back. Um, next, we will move on from the running backs, jump to the wide receivers, and we will start with the Houston Texans. Uh, last week, we saw six snaps of the Texan starters. Um, it wasn't a huge sample size. We saw them use uh, three wide receiver sets on four plays and then two wide receiver sets on two plays. It was Collins and Diggs for those two plays, but that wasn't really enough of a sample size to know how this rotation might end up looking in season. Um, we got a better view of that this week, uh, 17 snaps with the starters. Basically, all of the starters played outside of Joe Mixon, who's still dealing with an injury. So we saw a better look at that wide receiver rotation. And it started to look how we think it could in season. We saw the Texans get a lot of their backup wide receivers, at least a little bit of playing time, which we saw throughout last season. Um, the big positive takeaway was for Nico Collins playing 15 of 17 snaps with the starters. Um, he was typically not even reaching 80% of offensive snaps most weeks with how much the Texans liked rotating their wide receivers. So Collins playing that high percentage of snaps, even with the other good wide receivers on the roster, I ended up moving him up my rankings a little bit because it looks like they view him as the clear number one wide receiver that you can't really rotate out. He did take the two plays off, but that was it. Where Tank Dell, um, he's the one that's concerning. Out of the plays that were not called by, by penalty, he played 6 of 10 plays. It ended up being 8 of 13 if you counted all the plays that were called back by penalty. Um, typically, we aren't too concerned about that in the regular season because it's just a couple of plays here and there. It doesn't impact things too much. In the preseason, in this example, it makes a big difference. So Dell um, played the 11 personnel snaps, but he did not see a single snap in 12 personnel. Uh, they played only five snaps there, but they did rotate some of their wide receivers in 12 personnel. We saw Robert Woods. We saw John Mechie in 12 personnel. We did not see Tank Dell. So I think you can still draft Tank Dell to be a third wide receiver on your roster. Um, he is going to have some big games. We know he's capable of making some huge plays. My concern is there's going to be some games where they just don't need him to make those big plays to win the game. They'll end up scoring a touchdown or two. It'll be Collins and Mixon scoring, for example, and then they'll be able to just run the ball a lot to close out the game, and Dell's not going to see that many targets. So he'll have these huge games. He'll have some of these not-as-good games. Still perfectly fine for best ball, perfectly fine for DFS, but I am concerned a little bit in a redraft that he's going to have some of those bad games. Um, next wide receiver situation to look at is the New England Patriots uh, kicked off this uh, preseason week, and we saw a wide receiver uh, rotation a little bit similar to last week. The big difference is DeMario Douglas was back, missed the first preseason game with an injury, and it was a little bit concerning because he played 100% of snaps in 11 personnel, did not see a single snap in 12 personnel. A uh, similar thing with Tank Dell where it's just really hard for a wide receiver to be a consistent fantasy starter only taking those snaps in 11 personnel. And it's worse here with Douglas because Douglas is playing in a slot. At least Dell, we know he plays on the outside, so there's at least a chance on a bigger sample size. He'll start to see at least some of the 12 personnel snaps less convinced that Douglas is going to do that. We saw uh, Taquan Thornton and Jalen Rager fighting for one wide receiver spot. I think that'll continue to be the case. 
And then Jalen Polk is the backup for KJ Osborne right now. Osborne was the starter. Polk came in for uh, two snaps with the starters. Then the backups came in. Polk saw extensive playing time both on the outside and in the slot. So whenever it was a two wide receiver set, he was on the outside. Three wide receiver set, he moved to the slot. So this is especially concerning because uh, concerning for Douglas, that is, because there's a chance Pope could cut into Douglas's playing time this season. So not only might Douglas only play in 11 personnel, but he might not even play in all of the 11 personnel snaps. So that could be uh, pretty disappointing for Douglas, anyone who drafted him. Um, Pope, ideal situation, he overtakes Osborne for the starting job, maybe take some of those snaps from the slot as well. I think there's the best case scenarios to for Polk remain the same as what they were before, but there's also the worst case scenario that he could be a backup for Osborne and Douglas for a while and just rotating in for both of them. I think the ideal situation at the start of the season was it would be Polk and Osborne as the two outside receivers, but they've been pretty strict of having Thornton and Regor as the X receivers and then Osborne as Polk as the Z receivers. So it looks like they are competing for the same job rather than potentially playing next to each other. One more wide receiver situation I want to get to, and that is the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, we saw them play a mix of starters and backups, but at wide receiver, all of their noteworthy wide receivers were active and playing in this game. Uh, first off, we saw Joshua Palmer just play the first drive of the game, played 8 of 10 snaps. Uh, that was fine. They took him out after that point. He looks like their clear number one wide receiver. Then we saw Lad McConkey. He played uh, the first two drives. Uh, the snaps on this graph just show the first drive. But a uh, similar theme to what I've been talking about, McConkey only played in the slot in 11 personnel, did not play in the uh, 12 personnel snaps. It was a very perfect. He played 17 of 17 uh, in 11 personnel, 0 for, it was, I think, 7 or, or no, it was at least 10 on the um, and 12 personnel. So, uh, it looks like they view him as just a slot receiver, which is concerning, especially considering the wide receivers they have on the outside. And we saw four different wide receivers take snaps on the outside while McConkey was playing in the game. So it's pretty clear they just want to play him in the slot. Uh, same thing happened with uh, Jackson Smith and Ujigba last year. Same thing happened with Jaden Reed last year where they draft someone highly. They just play in the slot the entire year. Makes it harder for them to be consistent in fantasy. Um, the other noteworthy thing is the other outside receiver spot. It was Brandon Rice starting at wide receiver, the seventh round pick. Um, then throughout the rest of the first half, it was Rice and DJ Chark and Quentin Johnston all competing for those snaps. I would not be surprised if there's no clear winner throughout the season. We could see um, snaps go up and down for these three wide receivers throughout the season. It's just pretty clear you probably shouldn't be drafting any of them in redraft this year. Um, it is noteworthy for especially dynasty leagues or those deeper leagues that Brandon Rice uh, saw those snaps as the starter when there's so many third, fourth, fifth round wide receivers who are struggling to make their way up the depth chart. And Brandon Rice is potentially third right now. Um, it could just be as part of the rotation, but it looks pretty clear he'll make the roster and see some playing time this season. Uh, last two players I want to talk about are both tight ends. Uh, the first one is uh, mostly a tight end. It is Taysom Hill. Uh, started the game at halfback for the Saints. Uh, saw time at halfback, fullback, slot receiver. Going back to last week's preseason game, he also played some outside receiver. Uh, pretty clear that he is playing over 50% of the snaps with the starters right now. Um, they are missing a number of players. They're missing Alvin Kamara at running back. Uh, they're missing Juwan Johnson at tight end. They're missing Rashad Shahid at wide receiver. So a chance Hill takes fewer snaps once all those guys are back and healthy and playing. But right now it seems pretty clear, even though they have a new offensive coordinator, they are happy to use Hill just as much or even more than the last coaching staff was willing to, even though he's about to celebrate his 34th birthday. So a pretty bizarre player. He is someone that I moved up my tight end rankings last week, moved him up again after this game. Basically my top backup fantasy tight end this season, since if I can't get one of those 12 players, I'd rather take that high upside chance with Hill than all of these other tight ends that are either stuck in rotations or just not high upside players. So um, make sure that he has tight end eligibility in whatever league you're playing in. I know he has it in ESPN and Sleeper. 
Um, hopefully Yahoo gets over what happened three or four years ago when he had tight end eligibility and played quarterback for those couple games. But right now he is just a quarterback on Yahoo. So that's disappointing because quarterback is the one position hell has not played this preseason. Last tight end situation I want to jump into, and that is the Miami Dolphins. We saw the Dolphins um, play some starters in this game, uh, kept out their top two wide receivers. Uh, for the first drive, it was uh, Tua and Raheem Mostert playing. After that, they left the game. So this chart only shows the snaps with that first drive. But the top three tight ends played the entire first half of the game. And they were really rotated based on their personnel usage. Um, in 11 personnel, it was Johnny Smith playing 12 snaps. Uh, Durham Smythe played one. So clear that Smith is their tight end in 11 personnel this season. But in 12 personnel, Smythe played 11 snaps. Hill played 10. And Johnny Smith only played in three of the 12 snaps in 12 personnel. So that is very concerning. Uh, you do not see fantasy starting tight ends who are not playing at least 50% of snaps in 12 personnel. It just doesn't happen basically any year. Johnny Smith's the one weird, or not Johnny Smith, Taysom Hill is the one weird example. But outside of that, Johnny Smith, I'm very concerned about him because he's not taking those 12 personnel snaps. Uh, similarly, in 21 personnel, it was Hill taking. Uh, both snaps, so Johnny Smith looks like he's only going to be playing in 11 personnel for the most part. Um, ideally, over the course of this season, Johnny Smith will play more in 12 personnel and give him a chance to be fantasy relevant because he did make some nice plays in this game. So I think he will help the Dolphins more than he will help fantasy managers because especially once you get those wide receivers back in the game, it's going to be hard for Smith to see enough targets, uh, even if he is playing a significant amount of snaps. But if he's only playing in 11 personnel, it's going to make it even harder. Another kind of player that happy for him in best ball because he's going to have some uh, good plays in some games, happy to take chances on him in DFS. But in redraft, he's going to have a lot more games where he's not putting up enough stats than he is those good games. So that is going to cover it. That is uh, seven of my takeaways. I also have a top 10 takeaway article on PFF.com and also have a full recap of all 16 games. Even the teams that didn't play their starters found at least something to talk about there. So uh, you can find that at PFF.com right now. Also, if you want to look at snaps for all of the players, not just the starters or not just the skill players, if you want to look at the offensive line, the defensive players, or if you want to see how everyone graded, you can get a subscription to PFF.com right now. Uh, we only have two days left in our sale. That sale ends on Tuesday. So if you want to get a year-long PFF subscription, get 25% off that subscription. Use Fantasy 25 when you're checking out, and that'll get you 25% off the year-long subscription. Like I said, that gets you access to our premium stats and our mock draft simulator. Um, there are parts of that that you only get with uh, the PFF Plus subscription. So definitely go ahead and use Fantasy 25 on your checkout there. Um, we... I will be back on Wednesday with uh, John Macri. We are going to be talking about sleepers. And of course, we'll be back next Monday going over the final week of the preseason. So until then, peace out.